I am here with uh, Naomi Grossman, who you probably recognize through various TV shows and films. And how are you enjoying our festival uh, this year so far? Oh, having a great time. When did you get in? Did you get to see the whole time or just today? Um, I arrived on Friday. So you Los got Angeles. to see the whole See, I'm jealous because I only got here today. Oh. Mm -hmm. Well, I haven't actually seen that that much, actually. I've been hobnobbing and showing my own stuff. So. Excellent. Well, tell us about your stuff. What do you have in the festival? Well, I have a couple of women in the shows that they, they screen here, which is pretty exciting. It's actually the first time they've been seen on screen. I'm used to doing them on stage, and so, so to be able to sit back and just watch them and just enjoy is kind of a luxury. So how do you feel about watching your own work? Because I know I'm one of those critical people, like, oh, I could have done that better. How do you feel watching yourself? It's a little nerve-wracking, um, especially because you're in such a helpless position. You can't actually change it. Like when you're up on stage and it's, you know, turning into a fiery blaze, you can usually do something to, you know, help the situation. But when it's already cut and edited and, you know, in the can, it's you're stuck. <laughs> did you ever see something go? Oh no no no! The tape where I did this is way better, and they use that. Of course. <laughs> every every actor, every artist. Has yeah. to go through that, right? Of course. How do you approach your roles? Is each role the same way? Do you read the script first, or can you tell us a little bit about your process? Um, each role is definitely not the same at all, uh, and I. If I can, if I have the luxury of reading the whole script, absolutely. Um, that's not always the case, um, especially like in the case of, for example, American Horror Story is very secretive. I didn't have the luxury of reading that until, actually, it was uh, I think my the the fourth season, my second season that I actually got to read full script. So wow, so yeah. you only read your parts. Yeah. Which in that particular case was literally like a syllable an episode. So it was very hard to get a feel for like what else was happening. But that said, I was playing a pinhead. Like I didn't actually have to understand or know anything. <laughs> so it was actually okay. So it was a little convenient there. Yeah. How did you approach that role knowing that you would have to, because uh, you shaved your head, correct? Mm -hmm. Now I know as a woman your hair is like a lot of your identity. How did that, how did well, you, you do that? very beautiful hair. Thank so you. <laughs> I can see how it might be a little bit more I'd be traumatizing. I'd scared. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean I wanted to make sure this was something real, that I wasn't being punked or, you know. <laughs> um, I don't know, uh, tricked into some little extra role or something uh, to shave my head. Um, but no, you know, it was clearly a legit project and uh, and they were going to compensate me accordingly and, uh, you know, I'm an actress. That's what we do. So you just kind of threw yourself threw yourself into it. Absolutely. You know, if, if the role is a, a shape, is a bald person, then so be it. Let's do this. That role, uh, Asylum, was one of the scariest things that I've ever seen because they really, really turned the, the tables on that character. And have you ever done any research on what it was like to be in an asylum, especially during that time period? Mm. I'm embarrassed to say I didn't do that specific research. I did obviously do plenty of research on Schlitzy, the actor or character that was uh, that Pepper was actually modeled after. Um, and typically people like he who were microcephalic, which is a neurological disorder which usually results in an extremely small head and um, amongst other problems that, uh, you know, are a result, um, often those folks were misunderstood, especially in that time, in the 1960s, and, you know, wound up in asylum. So, yeah, I mean, it's that's what's so scary about the show, is that it's oftentimes, like, these are real stories. It's not just some fictitious horror story. It's actually like real things that happen in time. And that's a little bit more scary than fiction, I think. Oh. Truth is scarier than fiction. Definitely. So you said you have uh, several projects here at the Hudson Valley International Film Festival. What is your, if you can, I know it's kind of difficult, but uh, can you pick a favorite role or favorite scene that you did? Oh, that were here? Because mm -hmm. I only here they screen my two one woman shows. Oh, okay. So, okay. Then how that about changes the question? Overall, what's your favorite part that you've ever done? 
Well, you know, I always thought that the, it would never get better than a role that I would create for myself because I am kind of a self-starter and, you know, paved my own way by writing my own one-woman shows. Um, you know, I, I just always thought, like, it would never get better than something I'd write for myself. Uh, and then all of a sudden Pepper came along and just she's just sort of this, like, dream role. I'm not saying that this is it, that you know I've peaked and it's all downhill from here. I hope not. I don't uh, think so. I don't see that happening. She's definitely this sort of gift of the character. She just keeps giving, you know. I thought, like I said, I, I thought she might be just some extra role. I didn't even know that not only was she not that at all, she would come back later on in the season, like basically running the asylum, and then two years later, uh, you know, in the free show. So, I, yeah. Like, who, it's, she's just, and not only that, but like her heart, you know what I mean? Like, just for what she's done for me, but even just like what she's done for humanity, I'd like to say. I mean, maybe I'm blowing this out of proportion, but I don't think so. I've, I've seen, every, except the first season, I've seen them all, and I think she's a she's a very wonderful character. I mean, she just reminds us all, I think that's part of, I think why Freak Show actually happens to be my favorite season, is because there's some human aspect to it. And, um, like, I think Pepper reminds us to just, like, you know, I, I think I learned a lot from the freaks that I was surrounded by. Uh, while we were shooting, you know, uh, these folks, some of, you know, some of which may not have legs, may have malformed parts, whatever. They're still living life to its fullest. It's and it's so wonderful. inspiring. And I, I, you know, obviously I am not, you know, I have fully formed arms and legs. Uh, but the point is, um, Pepper obviously has sort of um, uh, yeah, diminished capabilities, and yet her capacity to love is makes up for all of it. You know, she's. And doesn't that say something about our, our culture that you can learn so much from something like that? That's so wonderful to hear about a, a role impacting you that. Yeah. That so how? Has American Horror Story changed you as a person um, and as an actor? Mm. It's changed like everything about my life, which is <laughs> kind of overwhelming. Um, uh, I mean, I'm here now probably because of it. Like, you guys didn't know who I was, um, but I was still doing this, you know, I was still here. And you come from um, a theater background, yes. if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Yes. So you got involved, uh, I think I saw your, your Q&A uh, when you were like 11 years old. Yeah. You got involved. Can you tell us a little bit about how you got involved in acting um, overall? Sure. Um, I was 11, 12. Um, I got involved with my first like children's theater troupe in um, uh, Colorado, in Denver, Colorado, and uh, did pretty much everything and anything that was there. Not a lot, but you know, enough to get me my SAG card at the age of 15. Um, I went on to uh, Northwestern University in Chicago and got my degree there. And then from there, I moved to Los Angeles. Um, I didn't really have immediate success like I'd hoped there, and so I, I found myself kind of having, just out of necessity, to write and create some of my own work um, on YouTube, on stage, you know, wherever people are willing to watch. Um, but I'm very thankful in the end for that because if it weren't for that, I don't think American Horror Story would have ever found me, much less you guys. So I'm a little embarrassed to say I didn't see either of your one woman shows. Um, what are they about? Are they comedy? Are they drama? Both. My favorite genre. <laughs> um, uh, so the first, the Girl in Argentine Landscape, is um, a coming of age story. They're both autobiographical. So uh, the first is um, uh, basically my story of growing up in Argentina, which I know I just said I grew up in Denver, but anyway, I spent some time in Argentina, which was really formative, and that's why I like to say I grew up in Argentina because I, I did. I 
It grew you as an artist, it as a person. It grew that me makes, as a person. That makes yeah, sense. yeah, yeah. Uh, in any case, that's um, sort of a little bit more innocent, sweet, youthful, simple story. Um, set at a youthful, sweet, innocent time. Uh, and then after that, that was actually, I, that was produced in 2001 uh, and uh, was very successful in its small town way. Um, I got uh, nominated for an LA Weekly Theater Award. It got LA Weekly Pick of the Week. You know, like I said, in its small pond, um, uh, it was quite a splash. Uh, and then the second, Carnival Knowledge, I did back in 2009. So it was like seven years between the two. Um, that is sort of a come of age story. Um, Ooh, I like those. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> um, it's, uh, I love the tagline is five million men in LA, she only needs one to work. Mm. Um, so it's sort of like a Sex in the City, like different clothes, cheaper shoes. Love that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so do you see yourself doing more um, <clears throat> acting or do you see yourself more creating or doing anything behind the scenes? I mean, I'll be honest, I created because I wasn't acting and it was just sort of a means to an end. It was a way for me to act. Um, I have been told on occasion I'm a better writer than than actor, which is... That wasn't very nice to hear. Well, but it, uh, you know what? It's actually... It's a it's an underhanded compliment. You know, that's nice. I'm a good writer. But yeah, I'm trying to be an actor. Um, anyway, I, I don't know what to say to that other than just thank you. I, <laughs> um, I think it's all subjective. It's nice that I'm not, you know, let, let's face it, I know so many actors who are just actors mm -hmm. and they're basically completely reliant upon their good looks or maybe that's it. And so I'm very thankful that I actually have other skills that will afford me other opportunities.